It is great to, uh, to be here. I'm really, really honored. It's the very first time that I get to present at LinuxCon. And I got to tell you a little bit of a personal story about that. When I was 15 years old, from all the money I saved, I bought my first computer. And it was, uh, and I don't think many of you will know it, but it was a ZX80 from Sinclair. And uh, now you know about how old I am. Um, the nice thing about it was that it had one kilobyte of memory. And you can imagine what you can do with one kilobyte of memory. Right now you can do nothing with a kilobyte of memory, but at the time I managed to squeeze out as a youngster with not much money to buy anything more than one kilobyte of memory, I managed to squeeze out a lot of this little machine. I did it through coding, not through BASIC, even though that was the language which was su uh, supplied on the, uh, on the ZX80. I coded in assembly, and I taught myself assembly. And from assembly, I taught myself C, and then I taught myself C++. And many years later, I found myself um, heading a technology department in an IT company writing device drivers for Unix and then for Linux. And I couldn't be happier to, even though I'm no longer a developer, I'm no longer the guy who works with the code, but I'm still in technology. I'm still working with source code, and I'm working for what I believe the most awesome company in the world, which is Red Hat. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about Red Hat. I'm going to talk to you about why Red Hat has been successful on making money with free software. And why am I saying it so explicitly? Because I've heard this question being asked many, many, many times in the last few days. Most of the people here in the audience who I spoke to so far have asked me, so, okay, how do you make money with open source? So I'll tell you how we do it, and i tell you why we are very committed to the principle uh, of open source and, and why we would want you to be too if you think you can monetize open source. But first of all, let me, let me brag a little bit, even though that's not something we normally do amongst developers, right? But bragging is okay, a friend of mine told, told me, if you're telling something which is actually true. So one thing we are very proud of as Red Hat is that we have had 60, 6, 0 quarters of consecutive growth. And isn't it surprising to know that there is no other company in the world that has shown 60 consecutive quarters of consecutive growth. Not one quarter was less than the one before. It's an amazing result, but it's, in my mind, not just about the dollars that we made, it's a reflection of open source adoption. If you look at how these results stagger from 2003 to 2017, I was, I joined Red Hat at the end of 2003, and if I, when I talk to a customer about open source, when I talk to my customers about open source, this was about the level of excitement we got. If I now go to my customers and I talk about open source, this is the level of excitement I get. And this level of excitement about open source has been growing and growing and growing. We're simply a reflection of it. But this is why open source is such a great way of developing software. So the numbers speak for themselves. And the fact that we've made a solution and, a, and monetized a business model around open source is something that really works. It really works for us, it can work for you too. But it's all about being very, very committed to open source. And we've been extremely committed to open source. We believe that everything we do needs to be contributing to the upstream community. And the upstream community is extremely, extremely important when it comes to making open source successful. You can't do stuff in isolation. You've got to have meritocracy. You've got to have agreement about how software is being created, written, and deployed. So it's therefore not about being the first. It's about 
doing the right thing, and that's what we very much believe in. And by the way, we also make mistakes. We were probably not the first company to adopt OpenStack, but when we realized how important it was going to be for the community, we very quickly changed our minds and invested in it, and now we're a leading player in OpenStack. Other things we did, as you can see, we did many acquisitions. For example, we acquired a company that was very strong in cloud management platforms, which was Manage IQ, a proprietary solution only supporting VMware. And what we always do, and what we're very, very committed to, is when we acquire software that is not open source, we will open source it. As a matter of fact, most of the due diligence we do about acquisitions of the companies we acquire is around how easy it is to open source the software that we do acquire. So in the case of Manage IQ, there is now a product called Red Hat Cloud Forms, and that has a community uh, which is called the Manage IQ community. So the best proof of all these things is actually also that we work not upstream alone, but also look at downstream. For example, CentOS. When the CentOS people joined Red Hat, it gave us the ability to better understand the needs of our customers, and it gave the CentOS community to better connect with Red Hat. So we connect both upstream and downstream. So upstream first is what it's really all about. Making sure that whatever you do has the full commitment and acceptance of the open source community. So we've been collaborating and committing to hundreds and hundreds of projects upstream in the community. The kernel, Docker, OpenStack, Kubernetes, etc., etc. Collaboration drives innovation. The nice thing about this, and that's what I firmly believe in, is that with the business model we've created, we've really become the first disruptor in the industry. Because think about it, Red Hat, we have no intellectual property. We don't own intellectual property, yet we have a profitable business model. This disruption is because of collaboration and collaboration that drives innovation and that we very, very, very strongly feel about. We don't believe, however, in, in committing half. You can't be half pregnant, right? You have to be 100% committed to open source. So things like open core models are not 100% committing to open source. And we want to be pure and clean about that, 100% open source. We also guide our customers and partners in this direction. I'll give you some examples of that later, but customers and partners of Red Hat often have questions around that. How do you do it? How do we contribute? How can you help us? And in the spirit of collaboration, we're always happy to do so. So here's our recipe. This is how we do it. This is how we make a product that we can commercially uh, benefit from, from an open source community. If you look at this, the open source community has many, many open source projects. From the projects, you see many different uh, distributions being created, like Fedora, ManageIQ, and all the others. And from the distributions, we create products like Enterprise Linux. And those products we sell as a subscription to our customers. And the way we summarize a subscription, a subscription really is a subscription to a stream of innovation. And it, it really covers all the risks that an enterprise customer would potentially have with using open source. And we covered it. The way I tell my mother sometimes is when she asked me, what, is, what are you actually selling? Because she thought I was selling drugs. I said, no, it's actually a subscription we're selling. And it is about an, like an insurance. We ensure our customers they can use open source by adding the right value to it. So building upstream distributions for commercial offerings is where you bring products together. It's like making a raw offering, like Fedora upstream is RHEL and over it upstream uh, is, is virtualization, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Productizing things is a very viable subset of making solutions. And of course, making sure that the long life cycles that our customers need and the documentation and all the added value is there is important. Bringing this then to market is something that we don't do in isolation either. 
We like to collaborate on all fronts. So we do this through partnerships. We got very many important, valuable partnerships. First of all, in the cloud, like with Microsoft Azure, AWS, as well as Google Cloud. But also technology partners are very important because ultimately there's so much technology out there that needs so software solutions that it needs to connect well. We have very important technology partners like Intel, who is our oldest partner in that sense. But to keep it local here for China, Lenovo, Inspur, Huawei, ZTE, they're very important partners for us. And then on the other end, we need partners that use implementation services, system integrators. System integrators that actually really understand very well what customers need and that have the challenge to bring that to life with the use of open source solutions. So our system integrator partners are many, many as well. But just to name a few from China, there is USIS technologies. They are for the last six years ranked as the number one banking and IT solutions uh, company and they're present in almost every bank in China. Then there is UEC which is a leading SI in China's finance and commercial and government center for over 10 years. So these are important partners and there's many, many more partners that we work with. But working in an open source community is all about giving back, is about sharing information. So the information we're sharing and what we're doing is investing in buying and, and sponsoring uh, research that will help us as well as our partners to understand the opportunity you have with open source. These are some great examples of phenomenal, phenomenal business opportunities that open source has to offer. Moving on, if you then see what kind of customers are willing to pay for open source. Again, one of these questions that many of you have been asking, who is paying for open source? It's mainly enterprise customers. 100% of the Fortune 500 companies in these industries that you see here are using Red Hat. 100% of airlines, 100% of telcos, 100% of healthcare providers, and 100% of commercial banks are Red Hat customers. ZTE is a great example. The NEP telecom industry solutions, ZTE 5G microservices platform is based on Red Hat solutions. It enables ZTE to deliver microservices platforms with extreme fast service delivery. And it helps ZTE to establish a leading position in the global technical, technical telecommunications market. Another great example that's one of my favorites here in China is the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Shenzhen Stock Exchange is using Red Hat, both enterprise Linux as well as JBoss middleware to run a highly competitive solution with extremely low latency that they need to stay competitive in the market. And there's many other examples. So Linux is the foundation of the modern infrastructure. Let's talk a little bit why Red Hat Enterprise Linux, both hardware and software ecosystems, are safe and important for customers. We started with Linux when it was just a physical solution. And then came virtualization in the form of KVM, VMware, Hyper-V, but also things like PowerVM or even ZOS from EBM, who are currently platforms on which you can run enterprise Linux. In the recent years, through higher degrees of self-service and automation, new subscription offering and support, both for public and private cloud, have then been requested. We call it the open hybrid cloud solution, of which of all of these solutions, Linux is the foundation. If we then look at containers, you can very easily come to the conclusion that Linux and containers are almost the same. Developers get a great experience by containerizing their applications. The ease of use combined of testing and reliable foundation for developers, creating an environment in which you can very easily and very quickly develop and deploy solutions is what containers offer, and it's based on Linux technology. I would like to say containers are Linux. We obviously work upstream very closely with the community uh, in projects like Origins, and we have a commercialized solution which we call OpenShift. And OpenShift is our container platform that combines Docker and Kubernetes distributions and really allows our customers to very efficiently 
uh, deploy containers. So our interest in Kubernetes was one of these projects that we were very early on uh, participating in. We saw the opportunity that Kubernetes offered to our customers and we actively became a participant in that community. We are now the second largest code contributor after Google, of course, in, uh, and combining that with OpenShift, this really offers a great solution. Now, bringing this all together in a vision that we already had in 2007 is a vision called any app, anytime, anywhere. And this is a really powerful message. Just think about it. Running any app at any time you want it, anywhere, whether it's on physical or in the cloud, is such a powerful message. And 10 years ago, we saw this as a vision, and now we see it as a reality. Through our OpenShift container platform, we enable our customers to containerize solutions and run them anytime, anywhere, at any, at any app. So this is the best enterprise platform for getting your code into production. And that's really awesome. I promised you a use case. Um, one use case that I personally really like is Macquarie Bank. It's an Australian bank, and they had the challenge to become a commercial bank. They were actually uh, a large, and they are a very large multinational bank operating in over 28 countries. But they saw that there was an opportunity for them to leverage themselves as a commercial bank and to compete, because currently to compete, you don't necessarily need all these branches. With their solution and with their technology, they actually won the 2017 Red Hat Innovation Award for Enterprise Transformation. So what did they do? Their mission was to build a digital retail bank to access a complete new customer segment. Their first priority was to choose their platform for execution. And they chose Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform in combination with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. They integrated a natural language processing facility that basically allows you to talk to your app on your iPhone and ask the bank, hey bank, how much money did I spend on WeChat this year? And you'll get an answer. So great technology. For them, it is so important because they need to stay in it ahead of their competition. So therefore, they need to be able to deploy new code very quickly, at least faster than their competitors. But also, they had some other challenges. They wanted to collaborate with Red Hat because they had developed some solutions that they really needed to be supported upstream in the community. And in good collaboration, we helped them to get this code accepted in the upstream Jenkins community. Just an example of how we help our customers to also get things upstream. So basically, with all of this, I am very happy to share with you today how proud Red Hat is to be part of this open source community, how great it is to have been accepted as a commercial company that has created a model that is commercially viable and that helps innovation grow faster and faster in a world that really needs it. So we're very proud to be here today. And the one thing I wanted to tell you, if you want to be successful, with a commercial solution and open source, then I would ask you to commit everything you do upstream so that we can commit to collaborate with you. Thank you very much.